hey guys, what's crack a lacking? Somebody give me a five for five and we'll get going. See what we got going on here. Man, guys, I'm sick, just so you guys know. I'll talk about that here in just a minute. I got to send this out real quick. Okay, so let's, uh, sorry about that dead air there for a minute. Kind of, um, things got kind of a little whopper jawed here at my house, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> so it kind of put me, uh, behind the eight ball here a little bit, so I had to, um, kind of, uh, yeah. Kind of switch things around, and, uh, we're going to do this first. And, guys, then we're going to, uh, do a members-only stream, okay? Um, we're going to do that after this. Uh, this this here really shouldn't take very long and thank you for the five by fives in there guys um so anybody that's a member or if you become a member tonight i am going to do a members only stream right after this one and um it's just gonna we're gonna be talking about some things uh that i don't uh yeah 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 hmm hmm <laughs> hmm okay there it goes my fun, the thing was all jacked up. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> yeah, um, guys, I just uh, and I'll say this, and then we'll get right into the space weather. If I'm ever live, and Marf goes live, or if anybody else that's in our community goes live, please go watch them and come back and watch me on on replay. Um, I've been helped by so many people here on on YouTube just to build my channel, and I don't want to take any views from them at all um no matter who it is i don't care who it is so you know especially like people like adam and dex uh there's just great people and i hate the fact that sometimes we got to stream at the same time and that you know between me and adam there's like a three hour time difference so kind of you know trying to get it work around everything sometimes it just isn't possible to go around that and and i do anyway most of the time <laughs> i try to get on before and i know they're not live right now um, unless i just gotta uh, nope they're not live yet so anyway i just want you guys to know that straight up off the get um but and also guys um last night i i spiked the fever well it was actually the day before i had about 103 and a half 100 in between 103 and 104 it was bouncing up and down and I'm, I've still got a high fever. I, uh, hey, Corey, thank you. Thank you for becoming a member. We'll see you at the members only stream in a few. <laughs> um, but guys, please share this out also. Um, because of the way I was posting things there, YouTube may not send a whole lot of uh, notifications out on this one. So if you could, please share it. It may take a second. So, um, but that's just what I'll say on all that. Um, now, you know, I got got the fever and all that. I've fought cellulitis all my life. Well, my all my adult life. Um, and sometimes I'll get a scratch right on my leg or my, my hand or wherever. And because I'm so susceptible to it, I've had MRSA. I've had all of it. Um, it's just, uh, yeah. So vancomycin and, and a couple other antibiotics on board, it just uh, it usually will take care of it. So... That's where I'm at, guys. Just so you guys know. Um, that's why I didn't stream yesterday. I just, I simply just couldn't do it. Um, I'm almost to that point right now. I almost didn't even tell you guys any of that. <laughs> because I, I feel like, I don't want you guys to feel like I'm coming out here and please watch me because I'm sick. And, you know, there's other people out there that do that crap. I don't do that. Um, so I, I just want you guys to understand sometimes I'm sick and I don't even tell you. Because you guys, if it's not, I don't know, if it's not serious, then, you know, why push my issue out there like that, you know? And and I appreciate any prayers I can get. I always take those. Good thoughts, all that stuff, right? Okay, so let's just jump. 
jump into it. But anyway, I am still running a very high fever. Uh, my energy level is really low. I do not feel good whatsoever. Um, but I am still going to be here, and I just want you guys to know that. So, And don't feel sorry for me. I'm not asking for any kind of any of that, so please don't. Um, it's something I've dealt with my whole life. So anyway, so we had an R2 flare, or an R2, uh, yeah, I guess. It's an R2 radio blackout caused by a large M-class flare. Um, is it a huge deal? Nope. Is it space weather news? Yep, because it most certainly is. Um, so we'll be, well, we got to look to see where this, these kinds of things affected us. We go here. This is the um, normal x-ray background. This is what's being measured in the D region. Um, so I'm not going to get into what all that means. Most people don't even care to know what that means. Um, if you want to know what that means, actually, you can just go over here to the NOAA and you can read. Um, or just type or just search it up somewhere. It'll, you'll figure it out really quick. And if you have any questions on what that is, please ask me and I'll try to help you out. But you can see where the flare hits. They show up kind of in bullseye areas here. Um, and signatures, I should say. So right there. Notice how we really didn't get into any of the red colors like we a lot of times we do. Um, what I will say, check this out. See how long that's lasting? That is a long duration flare. Okay? That means it flared and it stayed and it was producing x-ray for a significant amount of time. Um, the initial blast, if you go up here and look, we measure it in x-ray, right? So we get this right here, and it goes up to, you know, an M2. Now, remember what I said earlier this week. Remember how the baseline, this baseline I'm t talking about, right here. See this baseline? That's for protons down here, but I'm using it for an example. This, like, the overall base, or what would be, like, kind of normal for that day last uh, about three or four days ago this base was way down here okay so i'm gonna leave my cursor right there because i want you guys to understand something our base number of x-ray was increased already anyway now why does that happen well when you have less uh sunspots facing earth you got less x-ray that's where all these stuff that's where all the x-ray come from are from sunspots even the small ones are producing sunspots. So when we get a flare, like uh, we had the big X-class flare that was actually, we called it an X-class flare, but it came from two separate sunspots that, that flared at the exact same time. So they probably were more like M-class flares that combined, and, and our detectors here picked it up as an X-ray X, X-class flare. Okay. So when I'm showing you x-ray here, it's an overall, right? So that's why this baseline matters. So if we're way down here, and then all of a sudden, we see a flare that shoots us up to x. If, if we're down here, and that happens, it's a whole lot different than being right here and going up here. So you understand what I'm saying? So if especially if it's coming from one sunspot. So if we if, say our baseline was down here in the B, B uh, reading, okay? Like a B flare here. And that's where we were hanging out. And we get a blast from one sunspot, and we get an X flare. And then three days later, oops, we, we see this, and our, ba our baseline had risen, and then the same thing happens. We get an X flare, right? That's about half the size. So what I'm saying is the energy is coming from a more precise area on the sun. Hence, there's also a bigger chance for a big CME to come from that if that's the case. So I hope I didn't confuse you guys on that. But I wanted to point that out because this is a good way to show you. Now also, we have this M-class flare. You see how it kind of dove off? Because this was impulsive. This, did, this one here was impulsive. But the x-rays that hung on were here. You see that? See how it's kind of tapering down? So from where we got this initial burst was one sunspot and it was just so quick and impulsive. I haven't looked yet, but I can pretty much tell you that did not produce a CME. Um, it could have, but I doubt it. Um, and if it did, it's just a, probably your run a mill CME type of things. And I could be wrong on that too, because I am, you know, that does happen. 
sometimes the impulsive flares will get gigantic you know cme stuff from it but most of the time you have to have a long duration event to really get these big big cme blasts remember a solar flare is different than a um a cme so we have to make sure that we you know we're talking about a difference here okay um so let me do this uh let's go down here and I was looking at this. This is the in little spiral, and this is Noah's version of it. And it gives us a for it's a forecast model for CME impacts. Okay, um, the density is here on the top, the top graph here. It gives us two days of what happened before now, and it tries to forecast five days out in advance. Well, right now we are at turn of the day, basically. We're about 2 a.m. UTC right now. Okay. Uh, maybe even 3 a.m. Eh, more like 2.30 a.m. UTC, okay? So with that being said, that's right here, right? So something's happened because we've had, now they're forecasting a CME right here. That's what that is. That's a hit. And see how, and how, how am I saying that it's, it's a hit and not a solar, like a Corona whole stream? Well, because of this, the way the signature shows there, number one. I wouldn't even have to look at this model to really tell you that because it jumped up so fast. And typically a solar, uh, a coronal hole stream will kind of come on at least a little gradual. Um, and you'll see kind of a ramp up and then it'll ramp back down. Now there are times where you get a really big coronal hole stream hit that you'll see something similar to that. But this is really pretty, uh, you know, normal to see for a, CME signature on this model. So they are forecasting a CME hit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this model for you guys and um, I'm going to pause it, just grab it. And this is what I, I suggest you guys do, okay? So come over here to NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center, right? And all these links are in my description. If you, can't, if you don't want to use the, the links in my description, scroll down to the bottom. Here's all these different models, okay? And a bunch of archive data um you got dashboards we can go look at an aurora dashboard we'll just do that real quick just to show you right so anything on that dashboard page is it's all going to be about aurora what we would need to look at to see what kind of aurora we're going to get right they've condensed that into that for us um this is the conditions we should expect to see during a kp5 which is a g1 this is a g3 right here and this is g5 over here so those are the kind of auroras you would see, but I'm showing you that just to show you that they do compartmentalize all of this stuff for everybody so it's easy to see. And it's all in one place, so it makes it easy. So space weather enthusiasts, that's the one I usually take you to, this one. Okay, because we're talking about space weather, right? Hey, T and A Z, thank you for becoming a member. Love it. Awesome. Thank you. And we are gonna be doing a members only stream here and just so everybody knows here in just a minute. Um, so let me, um, we do have more sunspots facing us now. See all those? Remember when I showed you guys this two days ago? There were two sunspots facing us. <laughs> and they weren't all that big. So this is how fast things can change. So you got sunspot here, 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 here. I mean, they're, they're, it's popping up like we would expect to see in solar maximum. Okay. So, I'll just save that. Now, um, let me go up here. And what we're going to do, I've been debating on this, whether or not to do it that way or the other. So, I'm going to let this uh, finish loading up, guys. Um, I do want to show you these SEO images. But i got to stay on this page to do it, or it won't load. It's I don't know why, but... It's, on, it's in the tab, so I don't know why it doesn't just keep doing it. But maybe it's uh, trying to say bandwidth. Maybe I got a setting in there I need to change. I don't know. But this uh, version down here, this is the, this is uh, Soho. It's the one we look at all the time. It's a million miles in front of the, in front of the Earth, always looking at the sun. Okay? And it orbits right out in front of us around the sun. Uh, but it's a million miles closer. So it gives us our point of view. This is a coronagraph, 
It's not the black and white difference imaging that shows stuff really good. I'll take you to that here in just a second. But um, you look at the date here, and we can still see eruptions. And I'm going to point something out here, too, because I'm finding something here is uh, something I've, I've not seen ever. Um, and I briefly talked about it uh, my last live stream. And we'll talk about it a little bit more in depth here in a second. But you're not seeing a whole lot. I could go back further. You can see how we had a CME up here. Um, and it does, let's see, how far out does that go? Okay. Um, yeah, we probably have more images of that. Nope. Okay. We don't. <laughs> okay. That's weird. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll check it out on seeds here in a minute. Okay. Um, but what I do want to show you guys is uh, the 94 and the 304 because the 94 shows flares really well because it really does like highlight where the where the brightest parts of these flares are um, we can look at the 131 also and that's just a part of the light spectrum guys we can't see with our eyes and it looks at specific gases specific gases show up in different uh, light spectrum different parts of our light spectrum so they can assign this any color they want. And this is from our point of view also. But this is not in the same location as SOHO. Okay. And um, what you're looking at here is it's in geosynchronistic orbit. It stays over the same part of our planet. That's what that means. It stays over the same part of our planet and rotates around our axis with us at the same speed that we rotate around our axis. 15 degrees an hour. So what that does is it keeps it over the same spot in our planet, which is in the um, uh, eastern Pacific, okay? Um, and it's kind of does a figure eight pattern and all that. So enough to talk about that, the location of that. Um, I'm trying not to do that as often because I feel like I do it too much. Okay, so anyway, guys, um, we can look at this. This is the 94. Now... I'm going to point something out here, too, because I, I get this question asked a lot. Why did the satellite jump like that? Okay. Well, I went too far, didn't I? Back it up some, and we'll see it. Okay, so let's go forward here. Okay, that was a controlled... Uh, it was finding home. It's a controlled role of the satellite, okay? It has to find home. So if it can't find home, you can't adjust it because you don't know where the base point is. So every once in a while, they have to calibrate it. And that's what you see there. How do we know it's coming from a controlled role? Well, because of, and I'll show it to you. Okay, see how it's happening right there? Now, if you look, you can see it's a flat line and kind of curve, right? So... You can kind of picture that as the lens, right? So you can see what's going on there. So if we go forward here some more. Okay, now I want you guys to look at this right here. Just look at the timestamp. That is when that in flare happened. I want you guys to pay, pay attention pretty close to what I'm saying here. Okay, what I'm telling you right now is that that is on the other side of the sun a lot of those x-rays were occulted by the sun so in other words i'm telling you that that most likely was an x flare so i'm going to back it up and i'm going to show you why there's a lot of reasons i'm saying this okay you see these other sunspots are flaring too right that's a pretty significant cme but i want to point something out here the CME's erupting. Where's the big flare at, right? Well, it doesn't happen until after. Happened kind of at the same time, but the majority of the flare was happening after the CME. And typically, we, we don't see it that way. <laughs> but I've always told you guys, it can happen that way, right? It can be flip-flop. So, and that's what I'll say to that. But that's... And I, I'm pointing this out because this, again, is going to be facing us in probably a couple of days. If that had happened right here, we're talking X-Flare all day long, 
probably coming at us. Okay? I can't tell you that for 100% positive, but I can tell you right now, any other eruption, eruption that size, that you see something, here, I'll just show it to you. Okay, something else I want to point out before I show that to you. Watch all three of these sunspots. All of them kind of react at the same time. See that? You're going to see this, this, and this, and even this one down here, I think. See how they all adjusted all at the same time? Boom. Now, I can't tell you where that started. It, it looked like it started on this one and kind of worked its way over, right? And what you're seeing there is you're seeing a destabilization of uh, magnetism there that's going across the sun. And that can happen. Um, if they fire at the same time exactly, those are called sympathetic sunspots. And what that means is they're firing at the exact same time because they are sympathetic to one another because they're connected. Okay? And they're magnetic connection lines. And I talk about that. I say that so many times. <laughs> You know what I mean? So, yeah. So let me back that, and you can see that again. Now, you can imagine if that happened, happened right here. Right? So, again, we have another, we, we would be having a different discussion if that had happened like that. Now, I want to point something else out, too. Looks like there was a, a filament release right here, right at the end of this time, time lapse. Okay? I may not have a whole lot of data for you on this one. But it, it looks to me like that produced a CME. So I don't know for sure yet. So I'm not going to sit here and say that it absolutely 100% did. But what I will say, I think there's a good chance of it. Because on the 131, you're going to see it. Right there. It doesn't look like massive or anything. But it definitely looks like a, a CME hit. So we'll look at the, the flare off there to the left again. Okay, you see how you see that like rippled domino effect in the magnetic uh, lines? Like a, it almost looks like it's fluttering, right? Well, those are those are uh, highly charged particles traveling on a magnetic connection line. So yeah. Now this is the two eleven. This is the one that shows us coronal holes most of the time. That's what, that's what I use it for, and we can also see the corona really well in this one. So when things are rippling through the corona, you're able to see it really well, okay? Now I realize um, I'm kind of streaming at a weird time. Things are kind of up and down. So um, guys, please share it out. Uh, I don't want to waste anybody's time, but if you share it out, you help me overcome that stupid notification thing. It when you When you, like, change times throughout on your uploads and things like that it really jacks with the the notifications going out um a lot of other creators wouldn't have even went live if that happened to them um i'm not doing that because that's not my main goal my main goal is just to get this stuff out to you but i do want everybody to see it so um or why else would i be here right um but yeah so you can kind of see everything happening there on this one so let me um, also, I meant to show you in my last live stream, and I'm not going to be able to see it here. Dag on it. Okay, so I'm going to take it back some more. I'm going to take it back another 300 frames. We'll let that load. Because I want to show you guys that the moon didn't just eclipse the sun the other day. It eclipsed this satellite. <laughs> so I meant to show, I think I even put it in my title, and I forgot to show it to you guys. Um, we were on stream for like an hour and a half, and I think that was in my head. And I was like, man, they don't want to be here for that long. So I kind of forgot about it. But we had a filament release here in the middle. Okay, hold on one second here. I may have to take this one back further too. Probably will. Yep, going to have to. Daggone it. I hate that. I'm sorry, guys. I really am. Sorry. I don't like to waste you guys' time waiting on something to load. This is the 171, okay? Again, we get to see the corona really well on this, okay? 
Yeah, no kidding, Kathleen. Yeah, I mean, you know, guys, and that's what I try to tell everybody. We don't we don't need to fear any of that kind of stuff. You know, I, I know that people hear this and they hear that. And, yeah, some of it could possibly happen. But you got to try to stay grounded and just be aware. That's all we can do, right? Anyway, that's all we can do anyway. So there's really no reason to be fearful. Um, there Sometimes there's reasons to pay attention and be concerned. But the fear thing should just not be there at all, ever. Um, I, I, you know, and there are so many people out there that that prey on that stuff. And it just it makes me sick to see it. It, you know, and it, it's like, like, like that's why I like Adam and Dex because they don't they don't do that. Yeah, they're going to tell you, hey, this is what's going on. Come look. They're not going to sugarcoat nothing. But they they're not trying to scare you. Adam actually says the same thing I do. If it's scaring you, go watch something else for a, a few minutes and come back. Because nobody wants to be afraid because you make really bad decisions when you're afraid. So if you're getting to that point, please, 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 just step away for a while. Um, you know, having true fear is is not fun. It's not good. You make bad decisions, knee-jerk reactions. And, and in situations in like a massive event or something, that affects your family. I mean, just, and that's what I'm trying to say. And I, I think that's why a lot of us even do this. So people are aware, and it's one of the main ways we can help. You know, it's not like I can stand on your front porch and hold your hand through some stuff. You know what I mean? And, and be like that. It would be awesome if that could happen. But it's just not possible, those kinds of things. So the best thing that I can do is use my voice and my platform here to try to not, you know, try to get people to be a little bit more level. You know what I mean? Don't get me wrong. We all get scared sometimes, okay? But I can promise you this, that none of this stuff scares me. Do, do I? Am I concerned about some things I see sometimes? Absolutely. So... <laughs> I mean, but if that's happening, we need to make sure that we're getting away from that for a second and come back and look at it with fresh eyes, okay? Um, and don't be afraid to ask questions. Because I can promise you right now, anybody in our community that I ever speak about, they want to help you. I will not send you to somebody that doesn't want to help. I promise you that. Now, you're going to go down to my subscription list. You're going to see some people there that I watch. But I'm not going to promote somebody that's going to do that kind of a thing. Um, you know, uh, you and I'll, I might mention, hey, they had some good information here. Go check it out. That's what I'll say. I'm not going to say, <laughs> you know, all that other stuff. It's not going to happen. Anyway, enough of that. Sorry. Come on, guys. Those, oh, thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Do some squirrels in there for me. Hey, Martin, you like that emoji? We're going to look at some other ones here in a few minutes during the members-only stream. Okay. <clears throat> so, you see all that happening. And, and that's just, yeah, so that's what that is. Now, I'm going to take you guys over here to Seeds, and this here, I believe, probably came from, and I'm going to pause it because I do think it's significant. We have a filament, or it might be from that flare. I can't tell for sure. Um, but this flare, to me, seemed like it was going out this way. Now, the secondary eruption from that flare could be going kind of the direction that we're seeing um, here. But I think, let me tell you what I think has happened here, okay? So you see this kind of a halo, right? And I know we talk about halos all the time over here. See how you kind of get that fuzzy, ha hazy look? So let me, um... I'm going to show you what I got, what I think is actually happening. Okay, you see how that kind of spread out like wings almost? If you guys were to take that and rotate it 90 degrees to the right, it looks like that Phoenix, uh, Flare, CME, Solar Storm, right? The one that with the that gave us the G4. 
uh, solar storm here, the biggest one in since 2000, was it 17 or two? It, it was a long time. Let's just go say that. Um, but I don't know, and I don't think that this this uh, is coming at us. I do think this is coming from that area that erupted there on the sun. And let me explain, because remember I said it looked like a, it, a lot of the X-ray bit was being occulted. You know what that means? That means the majority of that eruption most likely was on the other side of the sun. So what that means is this is picking up a CME that's actually on the back, going off at least partial back backside direction. Okay. So I'm going to check out the CME tracker here. And, but the thing is, you know, Noah is saying that we're going to be getting hit. So I, I don't know um, if, and, and I'll say this too. Um, sometimes they get it wrong. That's just the fact. I mean, I've seen Noah and NASA say two completely different things about the same CME. It's just how the model interprets it, okay? So I, I just want to make sure that you guys are aware of that. Okay, so this is going to show that one. All right, so I'm going to tell you right now, just judging by this, I don't think this thing's going to hit us. Okay? Um, it has an outside chance. If this is off just a little bit, it could. Okay? But judging by this, you, know, you got the sun and the earth here, so obviously that's going to miss us. Um, according to this model, anyway. So if we go back here to Noah's forecaster. Go ahead and update that. Now, we can see the CME when it blows off here in just a second. Okay? See that? That's that CME. Now, I want you to look. This is what I'm talking about. These models are not 100% agreeing again. And this is where patience comes in. Okay? This, this is not moving all that fast. This is the velocity down here. 3 to 500 is normal. So, they're not even forecasting it to be, the speed of it to be even above normal. But this is the same eruption. And what I want to say, the NOAA model is actually showing a glancing blow here. Okay? So, I'm not saying it's going to hit us. I'm not saying it's going to miss us. I'm just saying that it happened, and it's possible that it could hit us. And if it does, it does. If it doesn't, it doesn't. If we get a glancing blow, it most likely will not be that big of a deal. Um, for the fact that, number one, it did not look very impressive as far as really highly dense. It wasn't moving fast. None of that stuff, right? So, again, with that being said, sometimes things just happen, and when they hit, they hit really hard. And I always bring up to you guys what? You guys can probably tell me already what I'm going to say. What's the single most factor... In my opinion, anybody that's been watching me for a minute, whether or not when a CME hits, if it's going to give us a hard hit or if it's not. You guys remember? I say it all the time. I like to see somebody's answer in the chat. Hey, Ripper. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that, guys. Hey, is the volume okay, guys? I just wanted to know. Hey, Trish. Okay. <laughs> hey, you're using my, uh, the crybaby thing. Emoji. No answers? BZ. There you go, Tab. You said it. There you are. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, she's right. <laughs> it's the BZ. What is the BZ for anybody that doesn't know? Um, let me just, uh inform you what that is it's basically the position the magnetic positioning of our magnetic field okay so if we're if our bz is at a negative six or negative more than six it allows things we we're in a position that we kind of couple with the space weather that's headed our way so i've seen us take big hits and because we were in the positive on the bz we didn't even get a geomagnetic storm 
I've seen this get something as low as a G1 storm. Okay, what we were what we would have expected to be a G1 storm, and it ended up being a G3 storm because the BZ went way negative. Okay, so that's just what I'll say. But yeah, now what's this show about? <laughs> no, not the eclipse. No, 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 no. Well, I'm a, I, I want to show you guys. I was waiting on this to, to load, and I was just showing you guys the rest of that stuff. Um, I wanted to show you guys this filament that released earlier today, right in the middle. You guys see that? So I don't know if that's coming at us. I would have to say that it is. And I'm not seeing any of the forecasting models show that. So I don't know if it's... If much of that plasma left, you're going to see a dark shadow right here where my cursor is. Right there. See that? Now, this could be, because what time is that? Let's, let's check that before I go running off with the mouth. 11.6. Let's, uh, let's see. What the heck? Really? Oh, that's because I was on... <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay, so that... Now, remember, that's a, that's a physical disk on the camera. The surface of the sun is this white circle. Okay, so we got some time before... When the CME leaves, before we can even see it anyway. So we're at 624... Okay, guys, that's coming at us. All right, let me tell you why. You might not be seeing it. A lot of you guys probably are seeing it. But I'm telling you right now, I, that's the first time I've seen that. Sorry, I probably should have been talking about this already. Um, let me, uh, I'm going to go forward here. You guys see that haze? That, guys, is a halo signature. And why we're not seeing much of it and why we're seeing like the more dense part kind of peek out the corner here is because of the way that that erupted. See this right here? Thank you, Deep Quake. Appreciate you. Anybody who gets those uh, memberships, please stick around. We're going to do a members only stream after this one's over. I'm about done here, guys. And we'll go over to the members only. Uh, show here in just a few minutes but tell deep quick paul thanks if you got one of those memberships you guys are killer I'm telling you you guys are so awesome but you see how this, this is a filament and it releases and it's kind of you kind of get you see this right here you get a little bit of a canyon of fire right there now it's not fire i know that this is just what they call it okay because it looks like that but see how that ejected off there so what I'm saying is most of that is actually behind this occulter disk. We can't see it. So what's that mean? Well, it means it's coming right at us. That's what that means. And if it was going off the backside, it would look the same too. But because we matched up times, right, that means that that, that halo signature we're seeing there came from this. So we do have a CME coming. Um, and I do think that that's probably going to impact us. Is it going to be huge? I don't know. But I can I can also confidently tell you that that CME I just showed you guys is not this one. This one's going off 90 degrees, if not a little bit towards the back. Um, you can look at the timing too. But that's not going to show you a whole lot on this one anyway because you get like two-hour increments. Um, but, yeah, so I do think we got a CME coming, at least from that one. Now, that changes things a little bit from what I said earlier, okay? If we get this hit from this CME right here, and then we get a glancing blow from the second one, like Noah's forecasting here, 
that could make this second glancing blow a little bit more uh, significant. Okay, so just I'm just putting that out there. Now, will it? The only time's going to tell, guys. Um, but as far as space weather data, everything is very, very minimal right now. Everything's kind of normal, just hanging out, right? Now, I do want to show you one more thing before we go over to the other stream. Um, this is something I, I've not seen before, guys. And I, I showed it to you guys in my last stream. And it is these little balls of plasma that are continually getting shot from that same area of the sun. And they're moving fast. Okay, you guys can see them right here. Look at these. Boom, 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 boom. Right? That was on the 10th. Okay, so let's go to today. And they continue. <laughs> okay, so, um, you know, and these are directed mainly to the south, right? But, and they are going off to what would be our east when we're talking about the sun. It's backwards from normal, right? But these things are, uh, I'll slow it down a little bit just so you can get a better look at this. Okay, that right there was the, the flare eruption. Right there, okay? So just know that. Now, all the other stuff, you know, we're just going to have to wait and see and get more data. Wait for other wait for other things to come in, and, and I'll have a better idea for you guys um, tomorrow. And, and I'll, I'll give you guys a more, I guess, a more concrete of what I think is actually going to happen. I'm just, I'm being patient, and, you know, I have ideas on what would cause this, and what we, well, what we would expect when we see things like that. Uh, but I'm not going to sit here and just start spouting it off when I can't give you anything to show you that that's exactly what's going to happen. I got to wait on data. That's basically what I'm saying. So, okay. Now, um, yeah, I don't really know where else to go with that, guys. We're just going to have to wait. Now, I will say this. NOAA has increased their chances of uh, M flares up to 25% now. So why would NOAA do that? Well, because of this. All these sunspots now. We have so many more facing us. Um, and, and again, if you were to go back like three days, you wouldn't see much here. And, guys, we do have these other ones just getting ready to uh, crest over. Okay, the one that did show, oh, I was going to, okay, cool, 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 cool. Check it out. Oh, I gotta go back. Oh, there it is. Okay. I wanted to show you guys that eclipse here on SDO. This is the same day as uh, the moon eclipsed the sun for us here on Earth. See that? Oh, I also got a question, too, about um, that eclipse. Uh, I think somebody said that they thought it was moving backwards. Why would it move backwards? Guys, it has everything to do with perspective. And our orientation where we're at okay um, I'm not going to get into detail on that but just know that that is very normal we see it all the time it's predictable it's forecastable all of that okay um, but you know I understand people feel different about that and that's okay um, but I've never been shown any any data concrete observations nothing like that that can prove out that going the opposite direction during an eclipse as far as where the eclipse starts and moves, right? Instead of going from right to left, it went. This one came up from the bottom, went left to right, right? It's all about where we're at in our orbit. It's because you got to understand shadows happen from the light source, right? The light source has to be shining at it, and that's how that's how all that stuff happens. But and we're rotating. Our tilt matters. What part of the year it is. All that stuff matters when we're talking about that. But with all that given, they can still tell you 150 years from now which direction a specific eclipse is going to be moving. What that means is that they've proven it all out with math 
observation, any kind of, you know, just physics and science, all that stuff. Orbital mechanics is all thrown in there all together. What I'm saying is, it is not an odd thing for that to happen. Um, and I know that the questions are there. And some of the points that I've heard are valid. They really are to actually kind of think like that for a second. But once you dig into it, you know that it, it, it's okay. It's, it's a normal thing. So, anyway, that's just how I feel about it. And if you don't feel that way, it's that's fine. I mean, I'm not... <laughs> I, I would be curious to hear why you think that that's not true. Um, and I, you know, and I ask that respectfully. I'm serious about that. Um, you know, everything I've ever seen here on these kinds of things has never been crazy, right? But that is the moon. Now, typically when I show you guys the eclipse, eclipse season here on SDO, the earth is actually passing between the satellite and the sun. So this is different. This is the moon. Okay, so it makes sense, too, if you think about it, because where this satellite is sitting, it's on the day side of the planet, and so when the moon went that direction, there you go. It just barely, the the, the, the satellite was in the right exact position for the moon to show up here, just here on the corner. So that's the moon. Just wanted to show that to you. I meant to show it to you guys the other day. Yeah, I know, Texan42. I, I, hey, Daniel. Good to see you, but oh man, I forgot to check my email, brother. <laughs> Dang on it. Okay, guys. Yeah, I was sick yesterday, guys, and I, I just, I still am sick. Matter of fact, right now, um, my son just brought me the thermometer and made me take my temperature. My temperature is uh, creeping up to around 104, so I'm going to have to go ahead and cut this stream here in just a second. But <clears throat> we are going to go over and do a, a members-only live stream. Um, so guys, thanks for stopping by. If anybody is a member, click that bell, get over here, come walk, come over and talk to me on the members only stream. In the future, um, I'm going to have it set up to where you guys don't even have to leave the chat. I can port you straight over to my members only stream. Okay. Hey, Sevens, what's up, bud? Oh, also, I want to say this too. Guys, get, get over to the lifeboat and show Calhoun some support. Okay. Um, Tommy is stepping back a little bit. He's still going to be doing a lot of the, you know, he's still doing lifeboat, okay? But, uh, Tommy's son, uh, Sphinx Calhoun is actually going to be sitting in the chair most of the time. So, please show him some love. He, he's, he's a good, good dude. He knows, he's been through addiction too, okay? Um, so, he knows a lot about it, very knowledgeable. So, please go show, show him some love. He's he's just now getting started on you know doing this stuff daily, kind of kind of taking over that kind of thing. Tommy's going to be doing stuff in the background, and I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail there. But anyway, I just wanted to let you guys know. Please go give him some stuff. <clears throat> uh, Ripper, I, I I'm already on antibiotics and stuff, brother. There's nothing much I can do, man. Um, if it gets, I I I know my if I get to 104.5. Um, I'll make my wife or somebody sit with me just to make sure I don't have like a seizure or something. But, uh, right now I'm just white, but I am going to do a members only stream. I feel bad that I haven't done one already and we're doing it like right now. So, um, anybody that's a member, look for that notification or just come back to the channel. You, it's probably already in your feed because I've already got it set up. So, but I am going to go ahead and go over there and do that. And, uh, yeah. I'll see you guys there. Anybody else, if you're not a member, um, I'll be back tomorrow. None, none of the other content here is going to change, okay? We're really, we're seriously just going to be talking about emojis, different extra perks I can add, those kinds of things, at least here on the initial. Uh, it'll be my first uh, members-only stream, and I'll, I'm looking to do some Zoom call-ins. I'm going to – there's a whole lot of stuff that we're going to talk about. But I'm also, guys, I'm looking at some stuff with some merch. I think you guys are going to think pretty pretty cool. I found, okay, I'll just kind of spill it a little bit here with that. I found some playing cards that are solar uh, solar related. I've had some for a long time, but they make more than what I thought they did. So um, I'm probably going to be doing some giveaways with that kind of stuff. So <laughs> hold on, Mark, for what? What do you mean hold on to, brother? 11-11.
Okay, Laura. Thank you. Hey, miss. What's up, bud? Matt, girl. Sorry. <laughs> my brain is just, yeah, it's frying right now. What am I holding on to, bud? Heat quake. I'm doing, I'm doing, a, um, I am doing a members only stream. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Deep Quake. I appreciate you. For sure, guys. Hey, guys. Deep Quake just gifted five more. So there's five more people. You guys want to come over and, and check it out, guys. We're going to, it's good. I'll be able to get more personal with you guys and, and share some th extra things with you over there. It's going to be completely laid back is what I'm trying to say. We're not going to be like sticking to a schedule and all that stuff. We're going to have fun together. And at the same time, you know, learn. So, thank you, Deep Quake. That's awesome, man. You, you're just, yeah, you're awesome. All right, guys. God bless. Yahushua. And uh, you can drink this Kool-Aid.